one. My name is Alexandra Weid and I come from Slovenia. In order to understand my position within the institution that I represent here today on the occasion of the symposium Reforming the Reformed, I will talk just in short about my what, when and whereabouts. I believe many of my personal specifics, being a woman and a foreigner, having one of the leading positions at the most prominent national educational art institution, just for the notice that today in November 2020, on the 24th leading positions are only six women who run the studios in Prague, presumably also conditioned my invitation to this symposium beside my professional artistic trajectory that I apply into my teaching and I consider myself to be within this context an example. After completing my studies to become a veterinary doctor, I came to Czech Republic in the year 1996 to study photography at the Film and TV School of Academy of Performing Arts in Prague. After five years of study at FAMU, I went to the United States on the Fulbright Scholarship to study for two years at the Visual Research Lab at the State University of New York at New Paltz. In the year 2007, I returned back to Prague and in 2008 started to head the studio of photography at the Academy of Arts, Architecture and Design in Prague, together with my then life and artistic partner, Czech artist Hine Kalt. I will just quickly try to outline the political and national origin of the institution, but then rather put an emphasis on the studio of photography where I teach already for the past 12 years. The Academy of Arts, Architecture and Design, also known as Academy of Applied Arts in Prague, was established in 1885 on the role of immediate models played by fine arts academies in Paris and Vienna at that time. It represented the first and only state school in Czech lands. The model of education followed the idea of master-apprentice interface and is in some way kept until today. Master of Today is a prominent and famous author from his, her field that gained national or broader success in her, his field of expertise. Today, the academy consists of 24 studios which are grouped within five departments, architecture, design, fine arts, applied arts and graphics. The sixth department provides lectures on art theory, art history and aesthetics. All departments and studios are in some way more or less connected through collaboration and the free passing of students from one into another studio during the course of exchange for one or more semesters. The tension, dispute, support, complementation, competition and the reflections between applied and fine arts are constitutive elements of the academy and in a way from the function and character of the students and as well the academic agency. The choice of applicants is very selective. The applicants must undergo almost a week-long entering exams period, and a limited number of students are accepted to the first year per studio maximum from two to four students. At the Fine Art Department, the bachelor program lasts four years and two years of master program, but can vary slightly according to the department. Once the students are accepted, they become part of the small collective, maximum up to 25 students per studio, where they all meet regardless the year in which they currently are. To understand the specific features of the contemporary situation of this institution, it's important to understand the local context in a historical perspective. Following the 89 Velvet Revolution, the Czech art scene quite predictably attempted to emulate the Western standards of art production in all senses through education, exhibition mechanisms, competitions, awards, residency programs, etc. It was the notion to return to Europe of a sort and to catch up with developments and to participate in the current trends, to embark on the road from periphery more towards the center of the world institutional art industry. But attempts to adopt a new model ended up in a failure, since the local art did not have access to financial, institutional and neither educational resources slightly comparable to those in Western Europe. In the period of transition, the Academy took over the grassroots built art education infrastructure, so it seemed quite naturally that in this period of post-communist transformation and the subsequent years of accelerated consumerism and the rise of the new advertising trends, 
came the initiative to establish the studio of photography, which happened in the year 1994. Before we took the position in the 2008 together with Hinek Alt, the studio had only two previous directions. One under the first pedagogue Pavel Sticha, based on extremely technical skills and regular practical assignments, and another one under the lead of Ivan Pinkova, who followed Sticha in the year 2005 and who more subjectively oriented the course of the studio with emphasis on artistic emotional photography. The studio of photography belonged at first to the Department of Graphic Design, and the change only happened in the year 2010, when we felt that the nature of students' creative processes under our guidance needed a transition into the fine art department. The students themselves showed interest, initiative and willingness to move from the applied art department to the fine arts department, so that they could expand their creative making also beyond the photographic medium, focus more on contemporary thinking and get critical response from their peers and the pedagogues from the other fine arts studios. <sighs> Today is the studio of photography one of the five studios under the fine art department together with the studios of sculpture, painting, intermedia practice and the visiting artist studio. The formal procedures in art that by the time we became active academics within the school became typical for the period and projected themselves into the education where the rediscovery of the heritage of conceptualism and performance art of the 60s abandonment of traditional media, a tendency towards dematerialization, intermediality, collaboration and interventions in existing social frameworks, concern with the social and political dimensions of artistic creation, a turn to the documentary and archival, the merging of the roles of artist, curator and theorist and the advance for the collective work. During the period from 2008 until 2016, when we taught together with Hinek, many changes happened in the, the structural sense of the department. Beside the change for the fine art department, there were many changes related to the medium photography alone. We like to use the term hidden river to describe the character of the studio, which represented the metaphor of the set of phenomena, meaning by that a group of students, development of photography, utopia of educational process, local and global trends that is in constant motion, which is sometimes very clear and easy to describe. At other times, however, this motion is indistinctly mixed with movements in various directions. Sometimes this flow is only known of, but it is not possible to see it. Works that originated within that period proved how the topics themselves and the students' methods of creation are linked, mutually penetrated and overlapping. Post-conceptual thinking was a collective base for most works, where the idea remains the main axis of the work, but the attention of authors once again turns to the creation through a particular material. Work is again an artifact within photography with frequent overlaps into other media, like video, installation or sculpture. We understood the direction of the studio where photography served not as a mandatory and unquestionable medium, but as a base of a broader consideration, as a basic definition, that many works exceeded or denied. With Hinek, we established a teaching method that was based on our agreement, as much as on our disputes that could serve as a content for the students. We understood the studio as a community of people with a shared interest in how contemporary art can co-create, act, portray, experience and imagine the world. In the year 2017, I reapplied for the position to run the studio together with the young Czech artist Martin Kohout living in Berlin. The studio concept interaction with students and Martin's art practice, who is based in video and 3D technologies, naturally expanded photographic media into another media like video and for the works related in the digital environment. Our goal is to reflect this shift in the teaching itself and in how we look at the role of photographic and moving images and records, ways of their creation and generation, distribution, manipulation, impact or archiving. We 
apply a laboratorial system of teaching, which pursues the mutual influencing of the individual structures of art, we reflect contemporary artistic and theoretical discourse, but also attempt to update and add new articulation to the list of existing photographic approaches. We believe that the penetrability of the boundaries of individual genres and media has already been established and we value the expanded field of photography. We therefore want to focus more on gaps in the understanding of the image, on exploring the possibilities of photography in its widest sense and on what role it may play in contemporary life and art and what are its benefits, stereotypes and limitations for social engagement. We acknowledge photography in all its forms. Currently, there are photo and video media, which fundamentally influence the relationship to the issues of original and copy, question of authorship, physical realization and its virtual resources, or the speed with which their digital copies spread in many different qualities, resolutions or modified versions. However, a new need for materiality appeared in the digital age. Young artists want to work manually, they want to touch things, they want to knead and to shape. This is a new element which enables photography to become a spatial installation. Students want to manually interfere with the process of work and it doesn't matter if the photograph is only a trace or insignificant element of a final product. That could be a metal construction covered in textile, but the referential point could still be photography. In the educational process, we translate contents through diverse mental concepts. Visual images can be translated to text. Text can be translated to drawing. Drawing can be translated to matter and mass. And mass can be translated back to a photograph. The most important thing is the working process, much more than the final product. However, the final product is also important as it is the litmus paper of all previous processes. We are surrounded by photographic images like never before. Haron Faroqi's film Still Life from 1997 reflects on the phenomenon of still life genre by depicting it throughout art history. The film is divided into four chapters using static still life painting of Dutch masters, while we follow from the beginning to the end the process of creation of four technically master photographs from different time periods in four different professional photographic studios. In each of the chapters, we follow the work of the photographer without any commentary and their assistance, while we can hear requirements and comments of the art director or a client along. The film slowly describes, almost in real time, the demanding work of the photographer and the need for everyone's cooperation involved. The photographer is the main character here, the professional who controls the devices, has experience with handling the light and various light-sensitive materials. He's a master in his field. Although the film is not even 20 years old, it depicts, from today's point of view almost nostalgically, the epoch, machines, environment and social situation which no longer exists. Beer advertising is still being photographed in a similar way, but the technology and position of the photographer are changing so fast that it is not at all strange to think that it will not be so soon. Analogy At the end of a science fiction film Holy Motors from 2014 by French director Leo Scarax, the main character recalls an era when the cameras were bigger than the people who operated them. They gradually shrank and automate and now, in the film in the near future, they are already so small that they are not visible anymore. Part 9 One of the interesting transformations that brought the dissemination of photographs through various social networks like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp is bringing a photo closer to the spoken word. Photo is not selected from the phone's storage but is created directly in the application. It mediates momentary emotions it transmits the information and after the expiration of the press preset interval, it destroys itself so that it cannot be saved. Photography has changed from a stable, material, unique object to an instant, ephemeral, virtual object. The internet is a space full of constantly emerging photographs, unanchored images moving across the internet. They change their location for a while, they temporarily become a part of another networks, create and break ties, co-create discourse, copy, are interconnected by keywords, and then they disappear. Hito Starr, in a lecture on the politics of photography, talks about new synthetic photographs that the new smartphones will soon be taking them, and where the image of reality is just the basis for the synthesis of data from already finished photos stored on the phone or on any social networks. This leads us to believe that we absolutely cannot anticipate the technological de development of photography nor its social consequences. 
In the studio, we meet students that we cannot force to accept our understanding of the medium or our ideas of its future. It is our duty to enable them to create their own broad, informed and critical awareness of contemporary art, which they will further be able to use, develop or apply themselves and where photography plays the role of an ideal starting line or reference point which can be approached or move away from. Conclusion Photography will be here with us in the future, but we don't know how it will look like. In today's dynamic development of visual technologies, it is precisely thinking about photography, the thinking about the margin between the present and the future. Oh!